Welcome back to the channel, Spartans. It's great to have Halo on the table once again. Even though this isn't a mainline piece, I still feel like it's important to unbox it, review it, and just upload it into Halo video history. This is the 2023 San Diego Comic Con exclusive World of Halo Neon Superfly. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> But right off the bat, you can see how well they decorated this box art. We have like a holographic pattern and sheen throughout, a nice illustration of our Warthog and Spartan Sealocks. Now, this is an exclusive. However, what makes this more bearable is that there's nothing new in this set that hasn't already been printed. So we have our Warthog, which has already been released, and we have our Spartan Sealox, which has already been released as well. The only big difference is, is going to be paint applications, giving it that neon look when it's lit up under black light. This isn't the first time this has shown up on my channel. If you've been keeping tabs with me, then you saw that I went live with the team at Jazzwares who worked on this beautiful piece. We got an exclusive first look and up close view at this baby before it was released at the con. Like last year's exclusive, it was one out of a thousand. This retailed for $49.99 at the con. Unfortunately, I was not selected to go to Comic-Con this year. Normally, I have pretty good luck and I get chosen every single year, but this year was different. This presentation is so beautiful the way they were able to do this. I love being able to have this open box concept without having to take this Warthog out, even though we're going to do that in the video. The doors are held together by these like Velcro pieces up there. And this right here is the sensor for the lights. So when you turn it on from the side of the packaging right here, you can keep it on, but once this door is closed, it basically pushes this button in, turning the lights off. But when you open this flap, it will turn them on. On the inside of this left door, we have a DLC code, which will allow you to download the Neon Superfly to your Halo Infinite multiplayer. And then on the right side, there's an illustration like you're in the hangar, you know, getting ready to choose your Spartan or your, your Warthog, you know, that whole multiplayer scene that you see. To activate these lights, it's pretty simple. We have an on and off switch there with an exposed battery compartment, which is great because if you were able to get one of these and you're an in-box collector, they made it so if you needed to change the batteries, you do not have to open up the box to do so. So we're gonna turn this on. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Even though I have these lights on, we should still be able to get a nice show from it. And oh yeah, you can see it. It's not as bright because I have all my, my studio lights on, but you can totally tell we have a light bulb up there and then we have a second one on that side also. All right, we're gonna do this with my lights off. And oh man, that presentation is so beautiful. I feel like the camera doesn't pick it up as, as well as it looks. But I mean, this is a piece that, you know, if you're just chilling in your game room or whatever, and you wanna light this up with the lights off, playing some Halo 3 campaign, I mean, this is just gonna display so well. Out of all things being an exclusive, I mean, this one makes sense, you know, doing it this way. I mean, I wish this was available for everybody to have because I think it's just phenomenal. But, you know, it's better than having something that everybody wants and that it's only a limited amount. So if they did like a Scorpion tank or like a Wraith or something like that and they made it an exclusive for a thousand pieces, people would be with pitchforks and fire. I'd like to try to give you as many close-ups in the packaging as possible uh, just to really try to give it justice because once I take this out, you know, I don't really have a whole bunch of black lights. I mean, I'll try to do the best that I can to light it up, but um, the whole main presentation is going to be from the inside of this box. All right, so I'm going to open this up, but I want to try to do so while maintaining as much of this original packaging integrity as possible. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of weird. When it comes to things like this, I would prefer it to stay in box and display it, but... I mean, it's just such a beautiful piece, and I have to take it out of the packaging to show you guys. I examined this pretty well, and it seems like it opens from the back, not so much the sides like I was thinking. So we have two pieces of tape there. I'm just going to carefully remove these and um, see if we can get this out. Man, is this thing cool. Even though it is just a repaint of both of these figures, it's still awesome to have some variety on the shelf now. So again, this does make a great exclusive because there's nothing really new to this uh, as far as tooling goes, except for the paint. 
Now I did redeem the online code and it is only for the Spartan armor. It's not for the hog and the entire loadout. Uh, so it would have been cool to have the entire bundle, but you know, 343 has to make some money somewhere. And this was only available during season one. I'm not quite sure if you can still purchase the entire, you know, you know, bundle pack, but uh, at least we get the Spartan armor, which is, I think, very important. Let's start with Spartan Sealox. Again, everything about this figure has already been released. In fact, this is the same Spartan that came with the Gun Goose set. The only difference is is going to be the paint applications and then the awesome little highlights route that give it that neon superfly look. I do think this is a great choice for Spartan armor with this superfly. Obviously, there are so many different, you know, variants that they can include in this. I am just happy that they didn't include a new sculpt or like a new armor piece. I'm not going to lie, I was worried with the announcement of this that we were going to get something new. I mean, at the end of the day, I could see them, you know, making maybe the cat ears an exclusive piece, you know, because not everybody wants those and not everybody, you know, bought those you know, in, in the multiplayer store. I didn't, but I think it would be a fun piece to have, at least eventually down the line. All in all, I think this is a great choice for the Spartan in this set. And I think what really sets this apart and just really stands out to me is obviously these little small paint applications throughout the entire armor. I mean, there's like very, very small details there. And each of those little areas will react under like a black light. And what I think is so cool is they were able to apply all this to the battle rifle also. I mean, just look at that little area right there on the stock. The articulation to this guy will be the exact same amount as the one that we received within the gun goose. So at the shoulder, we have a break with a swivel and it can go up about 90 degrees. Here at the bicep, we also have another hinge with a swivel and we're at just under 90. At the wrist, we have a hinge and swivel, so we can move it forwards and backwards and also spin it around. And there's some more of that awesome paint at the fingers. At the torso, most of our movement is gonna be here at the hips. I mean, we do have a slight amount at the upper part where the chest plate is, but most of this is gonna come down here by the waist. We do have the knife at the left thigh, which was also included with the Gungu set. Legs can do a full seated position, which will obviously help him fit in that warthog. And that is about as much movement as we have from the double joints at the knees. Any more than that and you start pushing into the plastic at the hamstrings. From there at the feet we have a hinge with a swivel with a lot of different movement and you can also take the foot and spin it around. Our last area is going to be at the head. Here is a nice close-up of that and you can see the nice accents that go throughout the shoulder pieces of the armor. It is on a basic ball joint with a hinge joint so we can take the head move it forwards and backwards about that far and we should be able to spin this head a full 360. Here's a nice close-up and comparison of our two Spartan seal oxes. Obviously, you know, the sculpting on them is going to be the same. The only big difference is going to be that nice paint application throughout. Of course, we can't forget a nice view of how these battle rifles look on their backs. And now it's time for Old Faithful. Right off the bat, they were able to sneak a lot of paint throughout this entire hog. I mean, there's a lot of little elements all throughout this body, like even on the front and then underneath the suspension right there too. So essentially, what we're getting in the game is exactly what we're getting in toy form. I mean, these little details on the rims. So everything about this is the same. There's nothing that's new or different about it. But one thing that I did notice is that these gas cans aren't removable. At least it doesn't seem that way. I mean, I was pulling on them a decent amount. And, you know, the other ones come off with ease. And these ones don't seem to be that way. Which maybe that had something to do with, like, the the paint you know on how they apply this maybe they had to glue them on there I'm not quite sure but I mean that doesn't really bother me I wasn't probably gonna take them off as it is like I do with the other sets so it is what it is but what is still removable is going to be the turret up here so this can actually still come off and it has like that circle with the little notches on the side that fits into the body of the hog and it still has its basic articulation you can see that the entire chain uh, is painted pink and this is just so cool so you can move it up and down. We can fit a Spartan on there. There is a peg for one of the boots. And here's a quick little POV of what it looks like if you were manning this turret. And you can see they snuck in some more of that paint there. It's also capable of looking at 360 degrees. So I find it easier to just place the turret in whatever direction I want my Spartan shooting rather than just trying to turn it itself because of these like notches there. I mean, this helps keep it in place. And I feel like if you spin this, you know, too much over time, these will just kind of wear down and be like kind of loose. 
And here's a quick example of how he looks in the turrets. And he just looks so cool. I really like how that visor is like shining right there, you know? It does give the appearance that, you know, it looks metallic. When it comes to the interior, you can see that the bucket seats are nice and pink. We have some highlighted areas here at the step up. The center console has a blue handle. And you can also see that the odometer and the screen also have some blue accents. Because of the tremendous posability that these figures have, our Spartans can fit inside the Warthog with no problem. Whatsoever. And I think this is how I'm going to display this. I like the idea of him sitting in the hog driving um, once I figure out a, a new setup, but I think I might display him out of the box and then like mounts or like, you know, find some sort of adhesive to put some black lights. But if that doesn't work, then I'll display him in the box with the doors opened up. Either way, I have a lot of reorganizing to do over there and it's going to be a lot of fun. And before we wrap this up, let's do a nice side-by-side -side comparison of our previous hog. Everything about these two is the exact same thing. Obviously, this one has a much cooler paint application throughout. So if they were able to do this, I would like to see what other hogs they could release in the future. I mean, if we have that sculpt, which is great, it would be awesome if once they got the online website going, they released a bunch of different variants. Either way, I'm extremely happy with this. Now, if you don't have this Warthog right here, I highly recommend that you pick this up. I know Walmart was selling them online for like, $15, which is an absolute steal. I mean, if you have nothing from World of Halo and you only have this, I mean, this is just an awesome display piece in and out of itself. Okay, what I did here is I just disassembled the shelf and did a quick mock-up putting the Superfly in there just to give a good idea of what this could look like if I display it on my shelving. So I ended up finding some black lights. These are like little mini ones that I picked up from Michaels uh, to use within some of my photography. Unfortunately, on camera, it doesn't it doesn't look as good as it does in person, but I can promise you it's uh, definitely fluorescent and it looks amazing. So what I think would be really cool is to find some mini black lights that you could attach to your shelving. I'm sure Amazon or some place has some battery operated ones that you could probably stick somewhere, but I can promise you it is definitely fluorescent. It looks amazing. I just wish the camera would do it more justice than what it looks like. It kind of just looks like there's a blue light. I guess if you stand back, the camera picks it up a little bit better, uh, but it just still doesn't do it justice. All in all, I mean, it looks sick. All right, everyone, that's gonna wrap up this review and unboxing of the 2023 San Diego Comic-Con Neon Superfly. I'd like to say a special thank you to my buddy Angel AVP Toys, who was at Comic-Con in the Jazzwares line calling me saying, hey man, I'm next, do you need this Warthog? So without him, I would not have this in my collection, so thank you again. The price for it at the con was $49, which I think is pretty affordable considering it's an exclusive. One out of a thousand, it's the Warthog, repainted with fluorescent effects, beautiful packaging, and a Spartan. The downside is it's an exclusive only at the con and it's not a mainline release. With that being said, I'm not a fan of flippers or scalpers. I will do everything in my power not to purchase from them. However, when it comes to something like this, a con exclusive, something that's not mainline, I'm more inclined to pay those aftermarket prices. And the reason why I say that is because I've been to Comic-Con many years and it is very expensive, even when I used to live in California. For example, if you get a badge for four days, that's close to $300. Then you have gas, food, hotel, then buying things within the con itself. And then not to mention all the time wasted standing in line, hoping that you get selected to purchase an exclusive. All of that adds up very quickly, but don't get me wrong, I mean, it's very fun to go. I always have a great time, but it gets pricey really quick. So right now, that is on eBay for about 100-ish dollars plus shipping, which if you don't go to the con, that's a very affordable price, considering how much money is spent to go to the con in general. So the reason why I'm saying that is because right now, this is the cheapest it will ever be. It's gonna go up in value a lot as years pass. So if it's something that you want, I would recommend jumping on it now because it's a great piece. It's, if you're a Halo fan, or if you're a Superfly fan, then it's something that you would want to have in your collection. It will display very well. I would just hate for years to go down the line and now it's like $300 and you're like, man, I should have bought it when it was like $100. But again, that is the only way I'm paying aftermarket prices if it's something that I can't get or can't get into. Before we wrap up, there is some news. So Jazzwares had a panel at Comic-Con and they announced their Vault, which is their online direct-to-consumer website. They didn't mention anything specifically about Halo there. However, in my previous interview with Maxwell and the rest of the Halo team, they reassured us that the line is not dead and there there's going to be different avenues that we can get products. So it seems like the direct-to-consumer website is going to be our best bet getting figures moving here on out. 
The website should be up around 2024, but in the fall we are still supposed to get the next wave of the Spartan Collection at GameStop. So it will be very refreshing to get those in hand. I know it's been a difficult road for us Halo fans, you know, but it still seems like the line is very much alive and they're trying to figure out new ways to get products into our hands since a lot of these retailers aren't going to. I'm still hopeful and I'm not giving up. Oh, and one more thing before we wrap up. If you do like this Neon Superfly, Mattel Creations has a pre-order up right now for their Mega Constructs. So you get this Neon Superfly, you get the Spartans, and then I think another set as well. I believe it's like $65. Either way, I'll post the link in the description. That is it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. It felt great to talk about Halo once again, and maybe shed some light and hopefully have you pull the trigger on getting one of these Superflies in your collection. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram to stay up to date when new things drop, like the Spartan Collection coming this fall. I also post toy photography and toy videos. As always, if you like this video and you want to see more of it, be sure to like and subscribe. It is free and it really helps out the channel. Until then, Spartans, we will see y'all in the next video. <laughs>